pictures and videos just like this one of Sully, the service dog, remembering his former partner, Bush 41, right after George H.W. Bush's death, lying next to his casket, traveling with his body across the country. And now we are learning what Sully is going to be doing next. Let's listen in on a news conference from this morning. Sully and I have a long relationship ourselves. I was his trainer when he graduated from the prison program. I'm main liaison with the staff at Walter Reed. Sully even took a trip to Bethesda with me and we worked with a few wounded warriors prior to his move to Maine. As the time grew closer to placing Sully with President Bush in Kennebunkport, I knew Sully's advanced training was complete <laughs> and Sully was ready to meet the president. From the first moment when the president said, welcome home, I knew it was an absolutely perfect match. As our training drew to an end, I watched President and Sully surrounded by family near the beach, watching his guests jumping off the dock into the sea and enjoying the day. It's a picture that will always remain in my mind. It was then that I was sure it was time for me to leave Sully to do his job. When President Bush passed away, it was his wish that Sully serve other veterans. We are coordinating with Walter Reed for Sully to join the facility dog program to provide animal assisted intervention and that will happen probably sometime in February 2019. In his new role, Sully will visit injured veterans, helping to provide comfort during rehabilitation center sessions or visiting with families during what can be an emotional and very difficult time. He will be fulfilling President Bush's requests. It was an honor to work alongside the president and his staff so they could learn to work together as a team. And I am honored that Sully will continue his important work with veterans and their recovery. Thank you. Sully and I are now going to demonstrate a few tasks for you. So guys, I'm gonna ask you to just slide over this way. Sully. And we're gonna go back with the uh, Leash. microphone. We're gonna to need to get over there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So we do directed retrieves for a lot of our uh, applicants. For PTSD applicants, we teach some uh, skills that help them to integrate with the public a little. And Sully is going to show you the shade command. So let's see. And we also teach the dogs to hit a button with the command get help and that would summon assistance for the veteran. So you so like get help. Stage struck. <laughs> 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 Good job, Sully. Hold on one second. I can see, but Sully, here. Thank you. <clears throat> Sully, get help. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Machines. <laughs> Good job. So as you can see, you know, Sully is uh, doing well here on Long Island. We'll continue to be doing well um, as, as we move forward. And we're looking at a February time frame for potentially uh, working with uh, the Walter Reed Medical Center. We're also very lucky um, to have with us here today one of our graduates um, who also went through the service dog curriculum. 
And it's my honor um, you know, to introduce Tyler McGibbon. In 2014, Tyler was involved in a Humvee accident in Kuwait that resulted in severe traumatic brain injury. Tyler spent years at Walter Reed National, Medica National Military Medical Center, and he came here to train with his service dog trooper in 2007. And they've, by all accounts, they've been a great pair. So please join me in welcoming Tyler and Trooper. today. My name is Tyler, Tyler McGibbon. I am forever an American Vet Dog's debt. They were able to introduce me to my best friend and my service dog, Trooper. Trooper helps me with multiple tasks in my daily life. These tasks would be difficult without him. I can have peace and normalcy brought back into my life. When I'm at music therapy, he will be right right by my side, laying down, and just listening. Eh? Leave it. <laughs> when I am out and about, he will help me with my mobility and keep me upright with his handle on my bad days. He will even retrieve items for me when my back is hurting so bad that I can't bend down. Just the presence of him makes me feel calm and at ease. Hey, good boy, stay. No, stay. I had a very hard time transitioning out of the military to a civilian life. When I found out I was getting placed with a service dog, all I could care about was getting medically retired and meeting my new best friend. I couldn't sleep the day before I came here to meet him. When I finally met him, I knew my life would change forever. I would like to say thank you to American Vet Dogs for being there for me. Well, for being there for us and bringing normalcy back into our lives. I would also like to thank every one of you that have donated to American Vet Dogs because without you and organizations like this, it would not be able to survive. pleasure uh, to introduce you know, a what I refer to as a hyper local Long Island group here uh, that helped raise enough money to sponsor Sully they work you know 10 20 30 dollars you know, at a time knocking on their neighbors doors and hosting events and it's really the lifeblood of our organization you know without donors uh, like that you know it's very hard for us you know, to do the services we do and you know as I discussed earlier you know, with an approximate $50,000 price point to you know, breed, train, and place one team. We need a lot of $10 and $20 donations you know, to make that happen on a yearly basis. So please uh, welcome to the podium Mr. Cliff Miller and Patricia Summers of America, Friends of America's Vet Dog. Wow, it's an honor to be here. I just want to tell you a few quick things about our group, Friends of America's Vet Dogs. We started to group together in late 2014, and we held our first fundraiser in early 2015. We're all volunteers. There's only about 22 of us, and the sole purpose for our existence is to help America's vet dogs get a veteran, a service dog, as it's needed. As I said, there's only 22 of us, 
and I, I repeat that, because a relatively small group of senior citizens, not young kids, were able to, in less than four years, sponsor 15 service dogs for veterans. So it, My point with that is if just 22 of us can do that, anyone out there interested can get together and make miracles happen and give a vet their life back. Um, we are based in the greater Sayville area, but our members come from all over Islip Town, Brookhaven Town, and we even have two members in New Jersey that come out to help us. Our main purpose is not only fundraising, which is critical, but awareness because everywhere I go, I wear the pin and engage people in explaining the, uh, the incredible purpose of America's Vet Dogs. We consider, as a, as a group, we consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to name each dog that we sponsor. And what we do, we take that extremely seriously. We take suggestions and we vote on it, but we use that opportunity to name each dog to honor somebody that was an unsung hero of the military, someone who brought great honor to the military, or someone who significantly assisted a veteran. As an example, Sully, we named for Captain Chesley Sullenberger, the U.S. Airways pilot who did the you know, miracle on the Hudson, but not because he landed the plane safely and saved all those people. We named it in honor, named Sully in honor of him because he learned his flying skills in the United States Air Force. So we're honoring him by naming the dog Sully because of his military skills that pulled off the miracle on the Hudson. And hopefully this through, especially with the unsung heroes of the, of the past, as people encounter the service dogs that we've named and honored somebody, um, they'll ask, why did you name your dog Ballard or, or Weber or whatever? And that will continue the legacy of the person who uh, um, you know, we, we honored. And I don't consider, and I don't think anybody in our group considers these service dogs really, as far as we're concerned, they're angels on four paws. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. And as you can see, you know, we really are you know, a local grassroots organization that has a national profile. And thank you to Cliff and Patricia and their entire group for working with us. And Cliff, I, I would imagine you did not envision this when you named Sully. <laughs> <laughs> You know, here in uh, you know, New York and in Suffolk County in particular, we're very you know, lucky to have you know, strong leadership in our government and have great partners you know, with our government officials. And it's my you know, great pleasure to introduce to you our county executive, Mr. Steve Ballone. Thank you very much, John. And I want to thank uh, John Miller uh, and his team here, uh, Don and all the staff and the trainers for the extraordinary work that you do each and every day here. It really is uh, incredible. You know, I, I do a thing every night with my kids and they ask, you know, we ask what your favorite part of the day was. So it'll be a pretty easy answer uh, <laughs> tonight. And uh, I, I gotta tell you, by the way, I think Sully looks pretty calm for <laughs> all the cameras being around and pretty relaxed. It's, uh, it's amazing. And Cliff, um, boy, naming him Sully, um, not knowing that uh, he would ultimately be going to a combat pilot uh, in, uh, who also happened to be President of the United States. <laughs> um, it's pretty extraordinary. And uh, thank you for, for what you do. My thanks to all the veterans who are here today for your service, including I know, Joe Campolo and uh, our Congressman, Tim Zeldin, and Tom Renane, who heads our Veteran Service Agency, and particularly to Tyler. Um, Thank you for your service to our country.